I'm Nana Fontelbeck for Business, and with me is Andrew M. Wills. He's head of research at wealth intelligence firm New World Wealth, and we're going to talk about Namibia, which is a new big millionaire hotspot. Hi, Andrew, and um, welcome again to Business. Hi, Linda. Thanks for having me on. So, why would a tiny little country in Africa that has very few people become a millionaire hotspot? I think there's a number of factors at play. Uh, Namibia has always been one of the safest countries in Africa, uh, which has sometimes been overlooked, um, but it's uh, becoming increasingly important. And, and uh, it is probably the safest country on the continent. Uh, Mauritius is probably safer, but it's, it's an island. Um, another factor is it's an increasingly popular retirement destination, especially certain parts of Vintuk, uh, Swakopmund, uh, Areas between Swark and Winton, both the Spain. There's also a lot of top end lifestyle estates going out there. Um, and uh, a lot of the reasons for, for it being top popular retirement destination is also linked to taxation. They've got no capital gains tax, no estate duty. Uh, they've also got one of the lowest population densities in the world, uh, which is um, we feel is, is a major factor. Uh, if you look at a lot of the fastest growing first world countries in the world like Australia, Canada, they have low population densities, whereas the slow growing ones like the UK, they have high population densities. So Namibia has one of the lowest population densities in the world, about three people per square kilometer, which is the same as Australia, whereas South Africa has got about 60 people per square kilometer. And, uh, Places like India have over 500 people per square kilometre. The UK and Germany have over 200. So we feel that's a major advantage in terms of them having more resources uh, per capita. Um, and also it is linked to wealth because Namibia is actually the third wealthiest country in Africa on a per capita basis. Obviously not on a total wealth based, but on a per capita, it's the third wealthiest after the Mauritius and South Africa. So, so it is actually a relatively prosperous place already. It's just that the population is so low that the GDP numbers are not that high. Um, but the thing is, the GDP per capita numbers are actually relatively good. So, so what do you find? Do people go to retire there or to buy a second home there? I think it's both. Um, but I think increasingly people are, are going to actually stay there. And, and uh, the... Uh, the Namibian uh, government is making it more attractive. They, they've rolled out some programs, or they are rolling out some programs um, to encourage. They did a, uh, just put out a nomad visa uh, uh, for travelers. And, and so that they are trying to encourage people to go there. Um, and obviously, the ecotourism sector has really taken off in Namibia in the last probably 15 years or so, before places like Botswana and Zimbabwe were way more popular than Namibia, whereas now Namibia is catching up. So that's also driving a lot of uh, forex income. And then obviously you've got all the minerals there, uh, uh, uranium deposits, diamonds, things like that, which have always been a big driver. And then there's a big, uh, a big uh, emergence of green technology uh, and possibly green hydrogen and things like that in, in Namibia, which could drive uh, growth going forward. So there's a lot of factors, but I think one of the things that's often overlooked is uh, a lot of countries in Africa don't really have well-established uh, luxury residential areas, uh, whereas Namibia does. It, ha it has some quite top-end areas, uh, parts of Vintuk, uh, parts of Swakopmund, and, and, it, and some really top-end lifestyle estates that have been put up. A lot of them are wildlife estates slash lifestyle estates. Uh, and so... It's got an advantage over a lot of other countries in Africa. Uh, obviously, South Africa's got that same advantage uh, and places like Morocco as well and Kenya, where they've also got well-established luxury residential areas. But if you go to a lot of the other countries in Africa, they don't have that. So that's also a factor. So, so when you talk about millionaires, are you talking about rand millionaires or are you talking about dollar or pound or euro? 
No, so we, we do everything in dollars uh, just for simplicity. Um, so the, the correct term is high net worth individual. So that's a US dollar millionaire based on investable wealth. So including cash holdings and listed listed equity holdings. Um, so it's quite a high bar. Um, there are just over 2,000 high net worth individuals or US dollar millionaires in, living in Namibia at the moment, which compares to about 40,000 in South Africa. But we see Namibia catching up. Um, by about 2040, we expect it to go about 10,000 in Namibia. Um, so it won't obviously catch up with South Africa, but, it, but it's uh, growing at a faster rate. And, and that over the past decade, it's also been growing at a faster rate in South Africa as well. So do people worry about corruption? Because I've looked at corruption indexes and um, Namibia is not as bad as South Africa, but it's still, you know, there's, the government is involved in something called the fish rot scandal, the government officials involved. Is that maybe a factor that would deter people from wealthy people from going to Namibia? Uh, I, I, I would think definitely all those things come into play. Uh, and I think uh, Namibia has, because it's got such a low population density and it's relatively safe, I think that sort of feeds through to the notion that it's relatively well run, probably not as well run as certain like a place like Australia, for instance, but, but I, it certainly seems to be heading in the right direction. Um, and fr from our point of view, we, we feel it's, it's just, it's just going to grow in terms of millionaire numbers, whether, whether that translates to the middle class growing, uh, I'm not sure, but, but normally what happens is when the millionaire numbers in a country grow, uh, the, the middle, middle class tends to grow as well. So what about currency? Um, do people buy in Namibian currency? How, how safe is the currency? Well, it's paid to the rand. So, so it's, uh, it's a stable currency in, if you consider the rand stable. Um, and the rand is the most heavily traded currency on the continent by quite a margin. And it's, it's liquid. And a lot of the South African banking groups have divisions in Namibia. A lot of the retail groups have have shops in Namibia. So there's always been a really strong link. Also, a lot of the wildlife safari places are the same group. They're part of the same group. Uh, there's uh, obviously the, the, the mining there. A lot of it is South African linked. So there's a very strong link with South Africa. And that link hasn't really eroded over time. Whereas the link between South Africa and places like Botswana and Zimbabwe has eroded. Uh, so that's probably going to count in Namibia's favor because a place like Botswana uh, and Zimbabwe aren't really options for wealthy people to go. Obviously, if there are some wealthy people going to places like Mozambique, uh, but a lot of that has to just do with a beach lifestyle. And a lot of those people are not that wealthy. Um, they, they, I think they're mainly going because it's cheaper than so what do you find um, um, most of this, these millionaires that you think will move there? Would they be South Africans? Or do people come from elsewhere as well? I think most of them will probably be South Africans, maybe 60%. And then the rest will probably be from other parts of the continent and Europe. That, that's, well, that's been the traditional, the traditional trajectory. Uh, a, lo a lot of people sometimes return. So maybe they were people that were, grew up in Namibia. They made money in Europe and then they went back. So, so they're, so they're not necessarily Europeans that are coming back, but, but they still are, are coming. So, so that's, so uh, we would always look at it from which country they're coming. From. So there are people coming from Europe. Um, but a lot of them would have links to Namibia in some way. Um, but yes, but as, as it uh, increasingly takes off, it's a bit like Mauritius in the beginning, Mauritius was really just, uh, attracting people that were involved in banking uh, and obviously it had a huge offshore banking industry but over time and and because of it kind of reached a critical mass of wealthy people and then the schooling system uh was more advanced than all the luxury food stores and then you had all these luxury residentialist things it kind of created a snowball effect and then and then it became attractive not just the people that were working in financial services and the same thing with namibia it's becoming attractive, not just to people that work in this 
the mining and mineral industry or construction is becoming attractive to people that work in other industries like financial services and things like that. So we see it sort of uh, mimicking Mauritius to a degree. So is there a golden visa or easy access to the country linked to buying property there? Um, well, well, there is talk of them introducing one. Um, uh, it's probably best to uh, to chat to the people at the Namibian Investment Board about that. I don't want to uh, speculate too much, but there has been talk of, of um, investors. Yeah, because it doesn't mean a South African because it's next door, it's, it's part of SADC and just go and live there. Um, no, no, you've got to uh, fulfill certain criteria. Um, and uh, uh, it's, uh, I think, done mainly on a case-by-case -case basis. I'm not sure the exact mechanics of it. Um, it's, it's not as transparent as, for instance, in the Mauritius program where it's quite obvious what you have to do to get it. Um, so, so it's, um, as I said, it's probably best to speak to the Namibian Investment Board about it. Um, do you think, what trajectory do you think it's going to follow if you look at the amount of millionaires there are? Well, I think that um, uh, we're expecting it to go from just over 2,000 currently to around 10,000 by 2040. So we're expecting really strong growth, uh, especially over the next few years. And, and then... Uh, once it gets well established, I think it should it should snowball. Um, but obviously, it depends on a number of factors. Obviously, the political situation there, as you alluded to earlier, um, all, all those things um, all those things could be possible issues. Um, but but uh, we definitely have very strong forecasts for for Namibia, as we do for you know countries like um, Zambia and. Mauritius, Morocco, a few other African countries that I expect, and Rwanda, of course, are expecting them to continue to grow strongly. But, but there's only a handful, about four or five African countries that we expect to grow at the same rate as Namibia over the next 15, 20 years. So, so who's the strongest grower at the moment? Is it Mauritius? Uh, Rwanda was the fastest grower over the last decade. Um, but it did start from quite a low base. So, so the wealth per capita in Rwanda is still quite low. I mean, there is always a lot of stuff about Rwanda and the media and how well it's doing, but, but it's always important to remember that uh, they did have a civil war there and, and their wealth per capita went down to close to zero. So, so it was always going to be easy to get pretty strong growth after that. So, so Rwanda has got about less high net worth individuals than Namibia has, actually. Um, so it's, uh, but it is growing at a faster rate and, um, but, but go, going forward over the next five years, we'd expect Mauritius to probably outperform all the other African countries. And then after that, um, we'd expect really strong growth. Probably we'd expect Namibia to probably outperform Mauritius. And uh, we also, as I mentioned, expecting really strong growth from Morocco, which is also becoming an increasingly popular retirement destination for wealthy people from Europe. And uh, it's uh, probably the only country in North Africa that's really doing well, because um, obviously Egypt has kind of struggled over the last decade. So, so Morocco is really done. We're expecting strong things from them as well. So, so just last question. So what is the profile look of this wealthy individual somebody who's always looking for a low tax base what are they looking for um well i think it's difficult to say we haven't spoken directly to many of them but but uh it's uh you know, through second-hand information i'd say it's uh taxation is definitely a fact i mean capital gains no capital gains tax no state duty. that's always going to be a a big factor it's difficult to say how big a factor uh, but I think if you combine that with the fact that it's a very, a relatively safe country, I think those two things on their own. For instance, if South Africa had, had was very safe, and it had no capital gains tax, uh, and no estate duty, I mean, in a decade it would probably be uh, one of the twenty wealthiest countries of the world. So, so it, it's it's. Uh, yeah, it would be a no-brainer. So, so it's really um, 
a matter of that. And obviously, it doesn't have the, it's not as established as South Africa. It doesn't have the benefits that South Africa has in terms of strong, um, it doesn't have a big stock exchange. It does have a stock exchange. It doesn't have a big one. Um, but uh, the JSC is, is, has been bleeding market cap. So obviously, it's going in the wrong direction. Um, South Africa's got a very strong base as it stands now. But like I said, I think the safety and um, the taxation profile. Um, if, if, but uh, I, I seriously doubt South Africa would mimic uh, Namibia's uh, in, in terms of that. But um, yeah, I think it's just uh, a matter of those two factors. And then also the low population density. I think people don't look at that enough. I think with Australia, people have often said, oh, they're doing well because they, you know, they've got a, a strict immigration policies and they and they've got uh, but they never really look at the fact that they've got such a low population density. They don't really need anyone else, the Australians, because they've only got twenty five million people. Uh their country's bigger than India, which has got almost two billion. Um and uh I know some of it's desert, but a lot of it isn't. And uh Namibia's really similar uh to Australia in many ways. And uh, in a way, it's the Australia of of Africa, Namibia. That's a very good analogy. Thanks, um, Andrew and Moyles. Thanks for speaking to us. Thanks, Linda.